Hello guys, welcome to today's episode. As we all know, power comes from how much fuel we can burn. Ideally, the more fuel we can burn, the more power we have. So today, let's talk about fuel pumps. Modern performance cars basically you put all these kinds of pumps to use, which will be in tank surge tank, external surge tank, modified OEM pumps, and OEM pumps. And these pumps, based on the pump core working mechanism, and the most common thing ones are brush pumps and brushless pumps. Some OEM pumps are brushed and some are brushless. Today, we'd like to talk and test the options we have for all the TTRS and RS3 platform to see which one works the best for different power setups. When it comes to high boost or extreme power application, we are always looking for more fuel delivery to the engine. OEM RS3, for example, uses a brushless pump to pump the fuel to the engine, where the OEM basket gets fuel sucked into the basket through a suction jet pump, so the pump inside the basket can deliver the fuel to the engine. Most of the small hybrids or C2 cars keep the fuel inside as stock since it's adequate for tune and power. Prior to the test, let me explain how we're gonna do it. Here we build a testing bench for low pressure fuel pump to simulate and measure the working condition of a low pressure fuel pump. With this setup, we'll be able to adjust the pump duty and injection timing for injectors and measure real pressure and volume of fuel injected for all setups to compare fuel real pressure and flow rate liter per hour between OEM GDS stage one and GDS stage two fuel pumps. The test will be conducted based on two test runs. First, pump duty 50%, injection timing 50%. Second, pump duty 90%, injection timing 90%. We are testing all pumps with injector dynamic 2600 XDS injectors. A special thanks to Four Strokes Performance from Belgium to link us up with control module. So let's see how the OEM pump performs in reality. Run one, pump duty 50%, injection timing 50%. We have a rail pressure three to four bar and 158.76 liter of fuel delivered per hour. Run two, pump duty 90%, injection timing 90%, rail pressure two bar and 355.68 liter per hour. On people that modifying a car with, with a big turbo or more boost, more fuel is needed. In order to avoid fuel starvation, we offer a stage 1 solution that's good for any center with 1000 horsepower. Compared to other third tank or in tank third tank, it's the most cost effective option. We added an extra wobble pump inside the OEM basket to add more flow and pressure to a low pressure fuel pump. In this setup, there will be two pumps working at the same time when the engine reaches the preset workload and it stops when the engine does not require more fuel. So let's see how it works when both the pump cores are working at the same time. Round 1 pump duty 50%, injection timing 50%, we have a rail pressure 9 to 10 bar and 302.1 liter of fuel delivered per hour. Round 2, pump duty 90%, injection timing 90%, rail pressure 5.1 bar and 637.2 liter per hour. According to fluid dynamics, with OEM fuel pumps will be another limitation for the fuel supply if you are really pushing the stage 1 pump to the limit. Then a set of fuel line upgrades is something you should consider. Together with the piping and pump, we call it a stage 1 plus kit. When the engine you are chasing up with 76 75 millimeter turbos, or let's say you are aiming for 1100 horsepower to so 1400 horsepower, the stage 1 pump or any of this kind may not be enough for adequate fuel due to low pump output. Small fuel pipe diameter, low efficiency of the suction jet mechanism, or similarly, we can say the pump is not pumping enough, and, and in the OEM basket, there's nothing to be pumped out. It will cause air bubbles to be sucked in the fuel pipes during high g force and high low scenario. Third tank, like the one we have here, is a good option for performance from our perspective. It uses the OEM pump as a lift pump to fit a huge BD tank. 
Meanwhile, also fed by the return fuel from the rear. So the tank acts like a fuel reservoir between the injectors and OEM fuel tank. Inside the tank, there are brackets you can mount whatever pump core to reach the desired fuel output level. Because the size of the tank, it can be fitted with multiple pumps. It can also supply the engine even when OEM pump cannot pump enough fuel for a short time. Lastly, because the third tank is fed by both OEM pump and real return from the fuel reel, the tank basically will never dry up. Seems the third tank is the ultimate solution, maybe or maybe not. The only thing is, it's too big and has to be mounted somewhere outside the tank. When it's mounted inside, inside the car, it will cause all your smells in the carbon and produce noises. If it's outside the car, sure, it's fine. A lot of people worry about the vision of any foreign object. So we completely remade the in-tank fuel pump to an in-tank third tank with two brushless pumps inside the BD tank and one lifting pump sitting outside the basket. For this pump, we have fuel lines and all other accessories to make it good for up to 1,400 horsepower. Most importantly, we can't wait to see how it works. Same as previous tests, we have doing two rounds. Round one, pump duty 50%, injection timing 50%. We have rail pressure 6 to 7 bars and 300.24 liter of fuel delivery per hour. Round two, pump duty 90%, injection timing 90%, rail pressure 6 to 7 bar and 760.32 liter per hour. So let's now compare the data we gather. This result shows the fuel rail pressure is around 3 to 4 bar when we open the injector for 50%. The flow rate was 156.78 liter per hour, but in real life, 3 bar of the rail pressure is very dangerous for proper engine operation. So you can see this pump is not good for ID2600 XDX injectors. You can now use it with the OEM pump. When we turn the pump duty to 90% and injectors duty to 90%, the fuel rail pressure drops to 2 bar, which will blow the engine. Even the flow rate is around 355 liters per hour, but it's not relevant anymore. Since the, since the vibration is very, very poor at this pressure, which leads to the point combustion and unstable AFR, so this pump failed the test. When pump duty and injectors duty at 50%, we have 302.4 liter per hour of fuel delivery. Real rail pressure was in desired range, which was good for the engine to go. Means the stage one pump is wide with bigger injectors and modest fuel demand. However, when it comes to full demand for ID2600 XDS, the stage one pump failed the test again. Flow rate we have was 293 liter per hour and rail pressure comes to 5.1 bar which is still very low. In real life tuning, most of the tuners they set up safety knife for the rail pressure which are close to 5.5 to 5.8 depends on the tuner's preference. So very unfortunately, it failed, it failed the extreme test again. Let's look at the JDY stage 2 pump. When pump and injector duty was 50%, we have 300 liter per hour of fuel delivery and rail pressure was consistent around 7 bars. Thanks to the fuel regulator, spray was good as well. It passed the test. We open up the injectors and pump duty to maximum 90%. We are reaching to 750 liter per hour flow rate. And sensor shows the rail pressure was still at 7 bars. When we look into the third tank, we can see the lifting pump and fuel return fee is working very hard to keep. There are still enough fuel to support a dual brushless pump. Based on the result, we know that a stage 2 pump is the ultimate solution for fuel delivery. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact us through email, WhatsApp, Messenger, or our official website. See you next time.